In today's lesson, we're going to go ahead and take a look at how to detect the collision when we run into an asteroid. And we're going to go ahead and fire off some, some sparks when we do that. And we also want to be able to enable our enemy ships when they shoot their laser to be able to add a little bit of shake to us as well. And we're going to do all of that through physics today. So let's go ahead. We're going to go and add a component. The component we want is the rigid body, not the rigid body 2D. That's for when we're playing with 2D games. And let's go ahead and we'll set the mass. Uh, at this point in time, I don't see anything else in our game having uh, any rigid body attached to it. So our mass really doesn't matter, but I like to raise it above one anyway for this example. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put it at 10. Again, drag in this game, I want a fairly fast moving game. So I'm not gonna have drag really affect us. And since we have our input manager, uh, the sensitivity and gravity set pretty low, drag itself for the physics is not gonna affect us a lot. But again, I just don't wanna leave it at zero. Uh, now angler drag on the other hand is gonna affect us quite a bit. But before we get to that, let's turn off gravity because we're in space and we don't want to fall straight down. And of course, that always affects us on the Y axis unless you change it. So back to angler drag. If we went ahead and started the game right now. And let's just go drive into an asteroid. Well, or just get hit by that ship. And I'm not touching the keyboard at all. I just got bumped just slightly by that ship. And we can see that I'm, I'm rotating. That's way too much rotation. I want to tighten that up a bit. So angular drag, the bigger the number, the less you're going to be affected by the physics. So one's probably way too high. Let's just try it out. We'll fly out, hit something. And I'm looking at it right here. I'm also looking at it down here. Uh, we didn't get a whole lot of movement there, did we? Let's bring this down. Uh, I don't know, 0.5. Again, this is really just season to taste. I know I say that a lot, but it's how you want it to behave in your game. So let's go ahead and we'll hit this one or miss it. We'll just let the thing hit us. Uh, there we go, I hit it. Uh, let's tighten it up just a bit more for me. Uh, let's go about half of what we have now. So 0.7, nope, I said seven. And we'll try this. Great. We get a little bit of waving, but it's not so bad that I can't control it. It just kind of knocks me off course, which is what I want. Now, I also want it to, if I go ahead and turn off the enemy just for a bit here. When I actually collide with something, I want sparks to fly off as well. So when I hit that, I want sparks to fly off of everything that collided, and I want them to fly off where we collided. So let's go ahead and implement that. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that to the explosion class. And I'm gonna come down here. Now there's one problem with the way that I have this set up is that it's gonna detect it off the colliders. But when we get into adding forces for when our ship is shooting at us, or sorry, the enemy ship is shooting at us, it's gonna to wanna to affect the rigid body. Now I know this in advance, uh, it's not gonna affect the colliding with the asteroids, that's still gonna work. But it is something we're gonna to have to work around when the enemy is shooting at us. But the method we want is one given by uni, and it's called on, collision, enter. And it has one parameter we can take, and that is a collision, which I am just gonna call collision. The thing that we can get out of this collision, the thing that we're interested in right now, is getting all of the contacts, and specifically the contact points. What part of my ship collided with this part of the asteroid? I want the actual physical placement, that vector three. Uh, we're gonna take that, then all we're gonna do is just pass it into here and get it to spawn the explosion force. Now this comes this comes to us in an array. So I'm just gonna iterate through it. And I'm interested in the contact point, which I'll just call contact. I'll just call it contact. And that's gonna come in my collision dot contacts. And then like I said, I've been hit. And we pass in that vector three. So it's gonna be contact, nope, not const, contact dot point. There we go, we'll go ahead, we'll save that off. One more space in here and here. And no errors. All right, let's go run into another asteroid. And I wanna do it slowly, because I wanna be able to see it. So there we go, we hit, not very exciting because I hit so softly. Let's hit a little bit harder. Of course, that means we got to line one up. Oh, I accidentally shot. That's okay. We'll go ahead. Ah, I was way too high, wasn't I? Of 
Of course, I know I'm not gonna have this much problem when I'm trying to avoid them. So there you go, I just keep ramming into it. Look at all those. <laughs> Let's go ahead and hit something else. Let's hit this one. Oh, just clipped it. And we see that I got a little bit of a spark off of me. Uh, I might actually need to go ahead and increase the, the amount that I bounce. Let's go. Oh, yeah, I think I am. But as you see, we got some sparks going. So again, I don't want to waste too much time in the video on this because it is just season to taste. Your values are going to be different. All right, so we've got that done. The next thing I want is when the enemy shoots me to not only have those sparks. Oops, of course, I spawn on an asteroid. Oh, then I just get rear-ended. Oof, may, maybe 0 0.6 is too much. I don't know. We'll have to figure it out. Oh, I'm having a hard time now. <laughs> Game just got a lot harder. Anyway, stop shooting me. When it shoots me, not only do I want the particle effects and also when it collides with me, but I also want to have the... Oh, bastard. <laughs> I also want to have um that shakiness like when we're colliding with something. So let's go ahead. We'll jump back into our script. So we'll just go ahead and work around what we have right now. So I'll create a public method that does not return anything. I'm just going to call it add force. And I'll go ahead, save that off. And now I'm going to need access to the rigid body. Now, not everything that has the explosion component attached to it is going to have a rigid body. So I'm not going to go ahead and make it a required field. But I do want it exposed in the inspector. So we'll make a rigid body, which I'll call rigid body with a capital B. And I'm just going to check to see if we have one. So if rigid body is equal to null, meaning we don't have one, return. There's nothing left to do here. Just get out. But if we do have one assigned, I want to go ahead and call rigid body dot add force. And I want to add force at position. And the first one is the force I want to add. And we might get into the mode. Let's just start off the first one. So we need a, a force and a position. So we'll do force. Uh, it's basically the direction. So we're going to say vector three direction is equal to the point that the laser came in at. So we will need to pass in a transform. And then I'll just call that hit source. Scroll down a bit. So it's going to be equal to hit source minus our position, transform dot position. And we want to normalize this just so it has a max length of one. So direction dot normalized right there. So we take a look, it has a magnitude of one. And then we also need a position. So let's go ahead, we'll have that passed in as well. And I'm going to pass it in first. So vector three, and I'm going to call it hit position, which we will put in here. There we go, we've added the force. Now, we could go ahead and in here call the I've been hit and spawn the, the sparks as well. We are already spawning them in the laser down here. Uh, we'll have to go back up to spawn. Or is it down right here? So we might have to rework a few things, but that's fine. What I'm gonna do is just expand it in here for now. We'll go ahead, put it there. This is, just how it works, but I'm going off the top of my head. And actually, no, now that I think of it, it does make more sense to come up into the spawn explosion uh, because we're checking to see that they have the explosion component already on it. This is a much better place to put it. And we can call temp.addForce. And of course, we need to be able to pass in the hit position and the source which is us. We'll go ahead, we'll save that off, jump into Unity and check it out. And we have an error. Uh, oh, a hit source is a vector three. So what we need is dot position. Then I guess we could actually use the hit position as well. Instead of going ahead and getting our position, get the hit position. I've never tried it this way. Let's go ahead and see if that works. So we'll jump back into Unity. Let it recompile, see if we get rid of our error. It does. And We'll select our player ship. Now, remember I left this open. I'm gonna go ahead and drag it on there so that we know where the rigid body is. The problem I was talking about before is that 
all of these components here, if we zoom in on our ship, all of these have colliders. So I'm probably gonna have to put them on there as well. Or what I could do is go ahead and take all of these colliders that we have and put them all on the parent game object because that's where we have to have our rigid body. Now it's gonna be a little bit different when we actually go out and grab a, an actual real 3D model that we're gonna use. We can get rid of a lot of this, but I don't quite wanna go there yet. And I just wanna be able to go ahead and create a script that's flexible enough to work both ways, at least for now. So again, if we start it up and it starts shooting us, uh, we still get the sparks, but it's not actually adding any force to us. And if we were actually to go ahead and select all of these colliders, add the explosion component, oops, keep them all selected, lock them, take the one with the rigid body on it, drop it in, and now go, there we go. I've got a little bit of a rotation going. And yeah, let's go ahead and we'll throw out a debug message in here too, just so we know what's going on. So I actually wanna make sure I can notice this. So I'm gonna use a warning. It'll show up yellow. And I'm gonna say add force so I know what method it's coming from. Then I wanna add on whatever our name is. And then I'll go ahead and append on what hit us. And of course I need the plus sign over here. So hit source dot name, save it off, jump back in, let it recompile. We'll go ahead and hit play. And there we go, the laser hit the player's ship. It doesn't look like we're adding enough force though. Fly out a bit more. Well, he just collided with me there. <laughs> okay, so when he's shooting me, it's not enough. So I wanna add a bit more force, a lot more force. So let's come into the explosion. I'm gonna come up to the top. I'm gonna make another serialized field. This will be of type float. And I'm gonna call it um, laser hit modifier. And let's get crazy, we're at the start. We'll go 10 and we'll multiply it by laser hit modifier. Save that off, come back in, hit play. All right, I had to actually look a few things up here. I went ahead and changed a bit around. Let's go ahead and take a look at what I've done. Uh, the first thing I've done is come up here and I guess we could switch this back to a serialized field just so we can change it in the inspector. I've gone ahead and created a float for the laser hit modifier. Basically, how hard did we get hit by the laser? Technically, this probably should be on the laser and one of the variables that's being passed in. Uh, for now, I'm just gonna leave it here though. We'll come back down here. Uh, so here we are, we got our add force. I'm just gonna go ahead and debug out. Just, uh, I wanna know what method I'm in. I'm gonna go ahead and say my name, you know, what, what am I attached to that I'm getting hit on? Or what am I applying the force to, I should say? And also, what hit me? Then I'm gonna go down and come check to see, you know, does, does this game object or whatever this component is attached to, obviously it's gotta be a game object that you can attach it to, but does it have a rigid body assigned in this, in this component? If not return, we don't have to do any of these calculations. And then I come down, I'm still calculating the direction. I've gone ahead and moved the normalize up here, but if we just go ahead and take the hit source, its position, so that transform that's being passed in, so it's up here. And we go ahead and subtract the hit position or the position where I got hit. Then again, remember we normalize because we want to have a magnitude of one. Uh, I'm just debugging out what this direction is now going to be. Technically, I guess you could call it a force. It's the vector the force is coming on and how it's going to be applied to your ship. And then I'm going to come down, take our rigid body because we have one. We're going to add a force at the position. And let's actually just go ahead and rename this. Force Vector. So we'll go ahead, we apply a force in a certain direction. I've gone ahead and modified it just so we can control how hard it hits us. This is where it's going to hit us. And then I've added on this force mode impulse. There's a few different ones you can go ahead and play around with. Uh, a lot of times I'll use you know, acceleration for when we have our ships, if we wanna move our ship through physics. I like impulse because it's, it's kind of like a little explosion. 
that's the changes I've made. If I come back in and we'll start it back up. There we go. Uh, actually, it ran into us. Let's start flying. Of course, I just ran into it. Oh, now it shot me. Now it's more like a space dance. But as you can see, as it shoots me, it's knocking me all over the place. Um, I think 100 might be too much. But again, we all know what I'm going to say next. If I don't like the value, it's season to taste. Wow, it really throws me for a loop. I am going to reduce that. I have it on all of them. Uh, let's try half of that. I want to give it a little jolt, but I don't want to be knocked flying from a laser hit. Wow. 50 might be too much, too. Let's just try 10. But anyway, that's it for this one. I'm going to go ahead. Oh, turn, turn. Oh, I can't turn. Turn the other way, though. Whoa. And of course, I hit an asteroid. Oh, now we're just playing space bumper cars. Uh, come on. Yeah, I might reduce it a bit more. But anyway, there we go. We have that done. We can now collide with asteroids and also have our ship shake when we get hit by a laser. Anyway, thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.